Thank you. And Thank you. we're going to introduce our next speaker, Ellie Sofa. Ladies and gentlemen, this speaker is a soldier, a former soldier who was injured in 2014 in Operation Protective Edge. That was the operation when Hamas started sending missiles en masse to Israel. Like now, you know, I sort of say as a limb, my daughter, my younger daughter has been through this, I think three or four times, like it's part of life. But that was the first time we had this mass um, time with the missiles. Since Ellie was injured, not a day's gone by when he hasn't given 200%. He hasn't put in his absolute maximum in every opportunity to enrich his life. He's completed his studying, even though he's had a hardship. Um, he has a relationship. He is all in, something we can all learn. Even many people without challenges aren't always all in. After his injury, he taught himself to run and cycle again, long hours of, hours of training and hard work, and he has excelled above and beyond. He's a part of an organization called Tikbot, and many of the people in that have been through so much. But he inspires each of us every single day and showing anything is possible with hard work, support, and hope. Ellie, thank you for coming on and agreeing to share your story. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hear me. First of all, thank you for you guys. You came for today. For me, it's a special day. Usually, I'm uh, not speaking in that day. It's a very hard day for me. Um, I'm doing that because of one reason, uh, for to remember three friends of mine, they died in the protective age. It's uh, Omer Chai, Gal Granati, and Matan Gottlieb. So this is the reason I want, I do, I'm doing this uh, with, with, with you guys. I want to take you to 2014 when I injured in Gaza. My unit with my team, I mean in a, in a building, and we start to hear like terrorists try to come inside to our building. Straight me and my team closed, closed the building. And I was like in the hallway. Two friends of mine like was in the one door and I was in the front door. And they started to hear like, like uh, rockets and bullets like coming really close to us. I saw, and, and after a couple of minutes, I hear like where bullets like coming behind me. So I, I look in my, behind my back and I see like a tourist inside the, the hallway he start to shoot with the, with the Kalachnikov. I start to warn, uh, I start to warn if, uh, through to the terrorist, and I see two, two friends of mine fairly injured. I I try to go inside to like for stairs. I sit down, and I try to get up to help my friends. They're injured. I cannot wait to get up. I put my hands like in my leg. I feel like everything wet all all, all my hands, and what, and then I look at my hands. I see like everything is blood, and I look at my knee. I, I saw like my all my bone is like outside. I say, wow, I even didn't uh, feel so I injured like in, in my leg. I start to scream I, with my friends, I injured, I injured. My friends come take me outside. With the, it was very, very hard to take me outside from Gaza to Israel. And in Israel, they wait for me like with the helicopter straight to the hospital in uh, Soroka. At the, so when when I first time when I go out from the uh, surgery room, they take me inside of the room, and I waking up, I open my eyes, I see like nobody next to me, and I look at the room, I see like two injured another soldiers, and I see like all the family next to them, and everybody hugs them, and I say, we are like, this is the moment like I need so much so much hug like all the hugs. And the people next to me, and nobody was next to me at the beginning. Before, 
before I get to the army, to be a lone soldier is very hard. So in the beginning, I need to, I, my parents start to write in, in a note, so they, they, they want to give up. If I want, I, like to get an injured, to, to be a, a lone soldier in the Israeli army, if my parents live in Israel, it's very hard. So they need to sign like a, a note, they're giving up. I, I grew up in an Orthodox family in Jerusalem. I have like 12 brothers and sisters. I the number 11. In the house, it was very, very hard, like screaming, fighting. I cannot get it. In the beginning, when I was really young, I would go out to my house like for one hour, two hours. Sometimes I went away like for one night. And when I was 13 years old, I said, I can't. I went away from my parents' house to the street. And this is what they do. I remember my first night, I sit down in Kikar Zion in Jerusalem Street. It was waning, waning this night. I start to cry. And I said, like, why all this stuff like happening to me? And it started to be raining and freezing outside. I said, I need, I need to find a place to get to sleep. I saw like an old building and like went inside. I saw like homeless kind of people inside. And in the stands over there, I'm going to be, to be my first night outside with, uh, for, my, uh, for uh, my family. This is how I, my life was like for two years. When I was 15, I started to work in the bar in Jerusalem. In the end of the week, like soldiers coming like, to drink in the, in the bar in the end of the week. The first time I saw them, like I didn't understand because where I grew up, I saw soldiers like it's not good people. And when I come to the bar, I see the soldiers, I see so nice people, I, I really want to be like them. And I see it's so opposite with how I born and where I born. One day, one guy come to me, asked me if I want to do like a mechina, gdam tzvai. It's like to do like kind of something like before you go into the army. And I say, yeah, I want to do that. It was if, uh, and you know, for Steph Wertheimer, if you know the person, he take like kids like me from the street and try to take them to a special units. And the end of the, of the, in the end of the Mechina, they like, I understand. So if I want to go to a special unit, I need to do like Gibush. It's a very hard like course to get to these special units. And I never won, never did sport before. Like how I, how I can do that. And after very, very hard work, uh, I get to the uh, Maglan unit. If you know, it's a very, very special uh, commander unit in the Israeli army. I want to take you one minute when I was in the hospital alone. I was a volunteer soldier over there, like nobody didn't visit me before. And this one guy saw like nobody not coming and didn't understand what's going on. Take like a picture, like, he put in Facebook, a lone soldier, nobody not coming to visit him. He don't have like uh, clothing, isn't this? You don't know what happened in the hospital. I didn't understand how so many people want to do so many good things from, from their heart and they don't, and they don't want nothing back. It's, I get like, like uh, boxes of, of stuff. It was crazy. And the first time I feel like people trying to hug me and I try to feel good, but it's not what's easy. Like people I don't know need, need to take me to the shower when I don't have clothing or to give me to, to eat something. I was like, to the wheelchair, I cannot do nothing. And it was very, very hard, hard stuff to do. But when I understand that, I tell to myself, and I need to work hard if I want to success and to do something with my life. I, um, I promised to myself, should I going to be back like before I injured? And after like a long time, a couple months, I need to go outside from the hospital. 
body problem. I don't know like we ought to go. I don't know my family. Like where are I going? I still in the wheelchair. Like how are we starting my life? And from the Facebook, the the person put the post. I get uh, I get a, a, a new family. Now I didn't want it before because like I because I. Ought, I don't have choice because I mean, also people like asked me before why I'm not going, why I didn't go like when I was in the army to adopt the parents. I didn't want because I like to do like to, be, to do everything by myself. But this moment, I was I, I I cannot choose that because I was in the wheelchair. I need someone to take care of me. And the family, the first time it was not easy. Like three goals, I not I remember the small goal give me uh, this room. The room was like pink. I say, oh, what's going on over here? And like how I standing now the life, it's not easy to go inside to a new family you don't know and to, in the wheelchair and you know, like in the first days, everything nice, but then it's not so easy. And the family start to see, I have like a lot of things I don't know, like from school, because when I love, I leave my parents when I was 13, I also leave the school when I was very young and I didn't study like nothing. I didn't know ABC. I didn't know the white, Hebrew, and English, like nothing. And it was so amazing. Like people in the neighborhood stopped to help me to read like a alphabet and ABC. Someone like teach me to swim. I never was in pool before. And someone uh, teach me how to, to drive and to take out the lines. I, I feel like I start, I start my life like to, from beginning. And I started to love to study because I, I ne never know how to study before. And I say, okay, I want to do like the Bagruyot. After four years, I get like the, the like one, one on the thing. I don't I will say that in the Bagruyot. Um, I get like very, very I, I, um, I, uh, I will say that. Um, the results in the matric in the, the matriculation. was very, very high. And I say, if I can do that, I want to go to the university. When I was 25 years old, um, I, w I went to the uh, University of Reichmann in Eritrea. My first year was very, very hard. Also, my PTSD and my knee. I first year I didn't pass any test. All my tests I failed, and I say, okay, maybe it's not for me. Maybe before it was easy because people helped me to study. Maybe now it's. It's the high study, like to go to the university. Maybe it's not for me. And I, I, I say, okay, I want to, I want to give another one chance, and I don't can give up. I do like all the study from the beginning, all the course I take again. It's take for me four years, and after four years, I finish in success, with the in the, the the BA in the university, and also I I I uh, I have I I meet my girlfriend. Uh, in the university, and two months ago, I get engaged. When I was in the university, when I do all the studies, I didn't stop to work and I didn't stop to train. The the, the organization Tikvot, the the first time they, his name Simon, she saw me in the in the hospital. She she saw me and she, she tried to show me a. So I can I can do I can do stuff you know I can go to do things and to do sports and where in two, 2022 I I was in the I take number one in the climbing wall and after that I was two years in the Ninja Warrior and in the last five uh, two years I did already five half Ironman all that I did with big foot. When I injured, I thought like my life is finished. Like I don't know, I don't know, I don't, I don't have for what like to live. Um, nobody don't care of me. Like I didn't because I don't have my family. And the first of all, like the I I thought like they go, going to take down my leg because but the injured was very very hard in sport. I cannot do anymore. And it's already like nine years from then. Until today, I still like going to the doctors and still walking on my legs, although the, also the PTSD and also and also the, the physics. 
like outside people today can see me like everything looks looks good but the the hard stuff it's inside in the heart and this kind of stuff you cannot see when in the outside like what i care of me for my injured like it's gonna be for all my life and today i still i still have pain and i still go to the doctors and i have also nights it's not easy i like very hard for me to go sleep and yes i have like days it's it's hard and i and i have nights it's very hard for me to pass that but always when it's happening to me i remember all the all the times it's I, I I do that like when I success the university when I success the Ironman and I say I can do that and I and I and I learn so it's ne, never mind never mean I'm, how many times I fail it's mean how many times I, I getting up from, from my fails and we have things in the life we cannot see that and we have things in my life so it, it looks like impossible. But we can choose for, for our life what is going to be possible for us. Uh, thank you. Thank you for guys to hear me. Um, I can talk like for hours. Uh, if, you, if you want to, uh, to ask questions or something like that, like. Uh, thank you. I would, love, yeah. I would love to ask you some questions. You know, Eli, firstly, thank you for sharing, and I know it's not easy. And second, mazel tov on Same. your relationship. And I just want to say, like, I think there's no one here. I mean, I'm literally sitting here with the tissue and crying who wasn't affected by hearing this, but I think you're such an incredible example of strength and resilience and being able to you know, tur turn a situation around. We see so many young people today who can't get out of bed and they play video games and they just don't have a sense of purpose and a sense of mission. And I think your story is so incredible because you came from a challenging family background and you were injured and an academic background that was lacking and you've overcome all that and then you still ran, uh, you know, competed in Ironman and continue to just prove so much is possible. And I think just for that, you could be such a role model to so many people because, and I personally am very close to the story of Haredi Lone Soldiers. I work a lot with them and I know a lot of the challenges they have to go through and that's without being an injured soldier. So um, I really appreciate you sharing that. Um, I want to ask you, where do you think this resilience came from, this strength of character? You've had, you know, I'm just curious what message you would share to people where you found that strength. I don't exactly understand, like, say please again. The the, you have such strength of character and such resilience and such ability to overcome challenges in your life. I want to know where do you think that strength comes from? Where do you find it? Like one message, people all the time are going through so many challenges. Yeah, yeah, okay. Where do you get that strength from? Usually, in our life, uh, we're looking at the bad things. If, if I wake up, if I have a bad day, so I my mind over there. If I have a bad story, if something not good with my in the work, or something not good with me relationship, I'm sad, and all day, all day, it's 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 in my head. And always I try to look inside when I went out to the street and when it's when I fell in the university and when I injured. I try to take these fun moments and to, and the hard stuff and to see what I understand from that hard thing, what good what good things I understand from this moment and, and to take it to the to my to my um to my next target. Like what better I can do to because if it's sometimes I tell to myself, you know, if I wake up and I not sleep because of the PTSD, I say it's okay. I hug that, you know what I mean? But I try not to be there and to remember, okay, what what I can do better today that I didn't do yesterday, and to go with this power for the next target. Because it's very easy to look on the 
I would say to the Afghan. So I usually I try to look like what I learned when I fell, when it, when I didn't, didn't when I injured, when I have abs in my life I have so many reasons like to be in the street and to stay over there and, and not to do all this kind of stuff and not study. But always I try to look about <coughs> this kind of moment and to see what I what I what I understand from this, from this when I go when I was in the street. I trying to take like which good which which good things happen to me over there and to take the good stuff outside from there because it's very easy to stay in the bad side, but it's not was easy in the in the beginning. It's it take time when I not 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 every time it's easy, but I also trying to put people good people next to me when it's hard to try to to, to uh, take me up. And to ask you, you mentioned that you lost three friends in Operation Protective Edge. Were they all in your unit? Yes. Wow. So that's incredibly hard because you had to also, I mean, people would have considered themselves a survivor just yeah. having to deal with the trauma of losing your other soldiers. Not easy. Not easy. Also, now I just make a break. Usually every year, I'm not making that speech in this day. We going to the Beta Kvarot and every and after the Kasim, we going like to the families, uh, my friends' families, and after that we meeting all my friends together, and uh, we we sitting and we talk what happened and, like every year. So now like all my friends outside like in in my uh, in my house, I tell him I need like twenty minutes, give me quiet, and uh, yeah, I'm here from with you guys. Thank you. And I have one final question. Did you reconcile with your family at all? Do they know what happened to you? Y yes. Today I don't have contact with my, uh, with my family. Um, from when I was 13 till when I injured, I didn't have contact. When I injured, I called them and um, it was a little bit mistake because they don't ask me like, how are you and what's going on? They try to talk to me like things like happened, bad things in my, in my, in my, uh, in my house. And I, my, I almost died in the hospital. Like the doctors take outside the parents, like I start to scream and I get crazy over there. And I, and I, and I understand, I'm not upset of the, about them. You know, I, nobody cannot choose or nobody can maybe, um, Tell them how to to grow up the kids, you know. Like, but I feel it today, so I need to put it in the side if I want to success. I feel like it's like stop me to success in my life. So it's not easy to put that in the side. My family, my mom, my dad, my brothers and sisters. Because, but I feel so. I need now to put it in the side if I want to success. Maybe one day it's gonna happen. Now I cannot see it's gonna happen. I need more to do work. Ellie, thank you so much for sharing all this. Thank you for also enlightening us what some of the challenges are of being a lone soldier and a Haredi lone soldier, plus being an injured soldier. And I think that one message you shared with all of us was that yeah. there were angels who came to help you along the way, whether it was a person making a Facebook post or family that adopted you. And I think for every one of us as a citizen of Israel, or people not living in Israel, we can also be angels in our own way and help, whether it's donating, raising awareness, helping a soldier, inviting someone for a meal, or being an adopted family. So thank you for sharing your story. And go be with your friends and do what's thank important. You. Thank you.